Sometimes people face real deep existential angst and dread. Like it can really confront you with your, with your demons. It's this like spiritual reset. Many different things happen to people here because it really is an interaction between the person and the substance. Right guys, so we've got a photo shoot at the end of the month. It's going to be with five customers, so we're going to have loads of fun with the customers getting to dress up. I'm Lucy. I'm based in Barnsley, South Yorkshire. I'm the co-founder of Lucy and Yak. So I, I need you guys to get it all organised for me. I'm going to be away at the end of September, so I'm, uh, I'm going on a retreat, and it's a retreat where you uh, take a psychedelic, and <laughs> and basically the retreat is to the it's it's legal in the Netherlands and they do these retreats where you all take it together and there's coordinators and they really keep an eye on you and it's a really safe environment. I've had some experience with LSD before, mostly in a party setting, but I have had glimpses of other things. But it was I've always wanted to do. Uh, some form of psychedelic in an environment where it is more like a form of meditation where you really get inside here and really try to understand what's going on and I'm just really interested to see what it's like in a setting that's you know you're not you're not worried because it's illegal just the retreat sounds like an amazing place where it's going to be people that are all interested in it and they're all but not just as a party drug. My name is Mary. I'm going to Holland on a spiritual retreat. Uh, and part of that retreat involves the taking of um, a magic mushroom called psilocybin. My husband doesn't know about it. He would worry about it, that's the only reason. What is it, the mouse can play while the cat is away? Oh no, I, that sounds awful. I don't mean it in such a awful way, but he's probably seeing another side to his wife that he doesn't know. Well, you know the reputation these sort of things have due to ignorance and bad press. People, oh God, I think they'd probably freak out if they saw me at my age taking this stuff. But then don't forget, back in the 60s, <laughs> lots of people my age would have been doing that sort of thing. I'm looking for some healing myself, some physical healing from what I have read and from what they research. Uh, it does seem to work for physical healing as well as spiritual and self-development and that type of thing. So um, if it happens, it happens. I, I'm going in there receptive. Stefana Bosse and I run our retreat program in the Netherlands where we support people um, on psychedelic journeys with psilocybin truffles. So do you guys want to come with me? Yeah. All sorts of different people come to the retreats from car mechanic to someone working in finance to a teacher to a psychotherapist. People come here to go on an approximately six hour journey uh, into the dimensions of their mind. Magic truffles are very similar to magic mushrooms. They're part of the same organism, it's just a different form and it contains psilocybin, which is the active psychedelic uh, compound in both magic truffles and magic mushrooms. So in terms of the actual experience, it's the same as magic mushrooms. It's a real honor to be in the space. Every single time that I sit in a circle with people like yourselves, it's, I really, really believe it's what the world needs. It needs people to be courageous enough to, to, to look, to go there. 
psychedelics have brought me to my knees, humbled me in a way I didn't think was possible. A friend of mine calls it an MOT for the soul, and it really feels like that. So now, Joshua. Tomorrow we'll cover the details of how we're going to go about taking them, but we'll be making a tea. We'll recommend that everyone takes uh, one and a half packets, which is a strong dose. A minority of people might find them slightly nauseating, but we're going to do use ginger, which is anti-nausea and helps a bit. We'll be coming round to you with the tea. Um, about effects you feel them about 20 minutes in and then you'll be peaking around one hour to for the next three hours and peak doesn't mean you just stay at the top it kind of like comes and goes in waves and then you descend we have a lot of experience both in actually journeying as well as in supporting people so just to trust that we we have your best interests at heart so i'm lola um and um similar to some of you i've been on a journey to um discover myself originally. So I've been a self-help enthusiast for 20 years. I blog about happiness. I've blogged about happiness for six years. I've never tried psychedelics. I'm here for um, the reason that uh, I guess what I'm trying to do is at some point I decided I'm not going to climb the corporate ladder. I'm going to climb the consciousness ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to go to that next step and I want to see what it's like. So I'm here to accept myself further, to find myself further, um, and to maybe understand a little bit more how to increase a bit more the love in the world. I don't want to sound like too sad or like, oh, I had such a difficult childhood, but it, it wasn't easy. The house had no central heating, no water, no sewage. And this was the time of shortages as well. This was like 80s, 90s in the Soviet Union. So I do remember like my mom queuing for food, um, then getting food of a very bad quality and just trying to feed three children. You were expected to suppress yourself. You were expected not to risk too much. Uh, even proverbs from the time. You will never achieve anything without hard work, stuff like that. Or every little bug know its place. I think I had burnout two times in my working career. What happened in both times is I was doing too much. Um, it felt like the world got smaller and it was all grey and it felt like there was no solution. It was a surprise because I thought mental health issues are not for kind of, you know, people like me. I have nothing to complain for. I mean, you know, I have a good life and so, and so I thought, okay, <laughs> I need to do something that I wouldn't have done, that I would be too scared to do, and that would be something new. I don't smoke, I don't have tattoos, I drink, but not too much. Um, I don't drink coffee. I'm very health conscious normally. <laughs> I've done a lot, a bit of Buddhism, a bit of positive psychology, a bit of everything really, um, and I got interested in trying psychedelics. Generally, people who come here come because they're, they're looking for something. And that can be because actually they're, they're really not fulfilled and not well in their life. And, they, and, and the, this feeling that something's not right is quite acute. And they've heard about the therapeutic potential of, of psychedelics. But there are also many people who come who are actually feel pretty good in their lives and it's all all right but like maybe there's something that they've missed with strangers in a sacred space being brave being true surrender to the mystery allow you to be you you have stepped up now step within open up to yourself let expansion begin Pain, joy, fear, bliss is some of what you may see. Embrace all, be curious, let go, let in, let be. I'm David, I'm from the United States, uh, Chicago, Illinois, that's where I live. 
A psychonaut is someone who uses psychedelic substances to explore their consciousness. I use different substances for that reason. Uh, I use it uh, to get out of my own head, uh, to uh, explore as much as I possibly can um, out of my own mind. <laughs> uh, as I got older and got more experience, I, I started to see that it was too hard on myself. So I started to open up more, and then uh, you know, psychedelics help. And a lot of us, the way we act is, you know, is not really us, it's put on us by society. You know, bullshit, you know, stuff that we're trying to live up to that it's not really important what we do. Um, following the head and not the heart. You know. I see psychedelics as a beautiful stepping stone where you need to, to go. I have respect for psychedelics, like a, a, so I don't um, misuse it or abuse it in any way. Um, but uh, there's there's moments or trips I had that I'm like, mm, I'm good, I'm good for quite some time. <laughs> I don't need to go back. I find it utterly kind of crazy that you can be put in a cage for exploring your consciousness. It's just I, I just can't wrap my head around it. So there's something something amiss there. I would like to see psychedelics um, legalized. I would like to see them used in a clinical setting. Um, I feel that there's so many potentials that can help um, people from around the world, not just the United States. So uh, I think there's a movement, and I'm very excited of where psychedelics can go. So I think we haven't even scratched the surface on it yet. All those stories of when people jump off bridges or all the different many scary stories that we have heard about psychedelics, it's not that they're not true. Really, really, really awful things can happen on psychedelics. There's no downplaying that and I would never want to do that. But the reason that they happen is because the people taking them weren't aware of how to do that in a safe way. With psychedelics, it's so dependent on where you are both mentally and where you are physically, what your surrounding is, the setting. It's not like alcohol and, you know, you pretty much know what alcohol is going to do every time. And so the experience and what it brings up, every journey is, is different. It's understanding how to be happier and maybe unblock some of my fears um, and some of the kind of blocks I feel are there, but I don't really understand what they are. I'm hoping it'll help me find a better balance, a, work, a better work-life balance. I, I am hoping that it will open up something else. I feel that we're all suffering from some type of mental issue, whether it's sadness or you know, lack of love or you know, not loving ourselves deep enough. So I think psychedelics is a, is a great way to look internal for that. I am just a bit impatient and I'm getting angry with myself that I'm impatient. So I'm hoping that the psilocybin will calm and heal that part of me. It would be lovely to have an amazing, beautiful trip. I'm sure there'll be some of that. But you're bound to come across darker aspects of yourself that um, you've hidden way back in the past.
Stefana came along. She must have seen I was in a struggle, I don't know. I looked into her eyes and they were so blue. And oh my God, I just swam in through her eyes into this beautiful ocean, warm water, blue water. And, and the waves caressed my body and said to me, you are safe in the womb of the mother. You know, when I first started doing it, I would say it was like a reset, like a control delete aspect of it. It doesn't give me answers. It, it, in fact, anything, it confuses you and it makes you have more questions. You just kind of lose all sense of reality and I remember feeling quite scared of that, thinking I, I don't know what's real anymore, I don't, I don't even know if I'm real anymore. And after I decided just to let go and I was like, this is really enjoyable, I could stay here forever. Some of the things you saw were a little bit raw, like different. You see beautiful patterns, natural patterns, you see uh, slightly scarier patterns, like uh, maybe I saw snakes. Then you get pulled into the darkness. So many tentacles from a mushroom encircled my body and, and it was like a, a, an octopus and clawing at me and this and this, but I instantly knew it was taking away from me now and he, healing me, so I wasn't afraid when this was happening. The shapes and different colours and just feeling like I was getting sucked into some sort of void almost, but of like really, a really beautiful void. And then you get almost pulled out of this darkness and different people say but different things. In my case I was light that then translated into love. So that, that was really terrifying and beautiful at the same time. I've been a facilitator since almost the beginning. Yeah, I was asked to come and give it a try because I'd done some volunteering previously at festivals, doing festival welfare, helping people having difficult experiences in like a very uncontrolled setting. Lots of people get into nature through psychedelics and maybe I did the opposite because I used to forage with mush for mushrooms with my dad, not magic mushrooms, of course. I remember seeing these mushrooms which weren't labelled with a skull and they weren't labelled with a little chef's hat meaning edible. They were in this, this middle position, neither edible nor poisonous. So I always had a curiosity with, with, about what those were about, the, these hallucinogenic mushrooms. When I was a child I was brought up in a religious Jewish family and my dad's a rabbi. Um, so religion was always important to me but um, actually, through my teenage years, I had a, um, a loss of faith and there seemed to be an opposition between the science that was my passion and religion. I think in society they're often seen as head to head, science and spirituality as being um, like mutually incompatible. Um, and psychedelics have transformed that. So I feel like a spiritual person and I have spiritual experiences with psychedelics. I'm a scientist and I went and worked for David Nutt, who has done some of the pioneering research in this rebirth of psychedelic science. Because psychedelics, when you take them, things feel so dynamic and exciting. I think that the assumption might have been that on the brain scans, that there would be lots of activity, lots of bright colours, but what they actually found was a reduction in activity in a lot of areas, allowing communication between brain regions that normally don't communicate because um, this information wasn't being so strictly marshaled along familiar tracks of the brain. Also what's happening now is the first trials of psilocybin for depression. These experiences seem to have a lasting effect, so that not just immediately after, but often six months down the line, after the experience, we do group work, we do integration work, different 
exercises again focus on complementary practices that can really help make sense of the psychedelic experience that people can use as tools to bring back into their lives. It's a funny thing this question about like do psychedelics permanently alter your brain? Because I think some people are really afraid of that. It's not as easy to to change everything around as, as people think. If you don't take the integration at least as seriously as the actual psychedelic experience, then it's not about growth and healing, then it's just about having a crazy wild experience. It can be really difficult and really heartbreaking when you go back to your everyday environment and people just don't understand. So in psychedelic communities at least you will find spaces where, where people get it and where people can support you in your journey. It's been two weeks, a little bit more than two weeks. Just looking at the aftermath of it, I think it changes you. You are a different person. The person that's leaving the retreat will be different to the person that came into retreat. And this is obvious in many things, in what you believe, what you think, what your priorities are, how you hold yourself, how approachable you are, um, the way you glow apparently, and all of those things. Like, uh, person, I stopped dyeing my hair. <laughs> I stopped dyeing my hair because why would I? If you're ready, if you feel you're ready, and you've done some work before, and you know what to expect, and you've done the reading, etc., or if you're just a naturally very open-minded person, and you think that that will be beneficial to you, uh, yeah, do it. Uh, just be prepared that it's not gonna be like a walk in the park. You're gonna have that difficult period in the beginning. You're gonna experience dying. You're gonna feel like you're dying. And you will need to, if you, even if you didn't do the work before, you will need to do the work afterwards. Because you just won't, otherwise you'll be so confused. You will need to read, you will need to watch stuff, you will need to think about things. You will need to face a lot of uncomfortable questions. My experience with Silas Advent was nothing like I thought it would be. I feel that I got a terrible beating up. Uh, a, a terrible... Um, shattering I did my whole my whole actually my whole life is shattered it's upside down it's upside down yeah there's times when I actually said to myself oh I really shouldn't have gone on this trip I went into it very very confident that I was going to come out totally healed of everything that I might have felt um, but I actually learned very, very quickly, that um, I, I had to work to, to make things work. But when I think about the positive sides and my belief and faith in um, plant medicine and that, I know that eventually it's going to turn out all right. You know, I feel something has moved, something has shifted, something has been taken out of my body, some heaviness. There's been a lot of learning. It has brought me back to when I was younger. Um, memories of other days, you know, um, yeah. Mm. A little bit sad there anyway, the fact, because in a way it has emphasised, well, come on, you are getting old. So <laughs> this is our studio. We're going to use it for photo shoots. It is a little bit psychedelic, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely got that, um, that vibe. I definitely feel um, more relaxed. I've got a photo shoot tomorrow. I'm usually stressing to death about photo shoots, but um, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Letting go, just letting go of control and letting other people do it and see what happens. You know, I had to do that um, when I was tripping. <laughs> and so I think I have a feeling that that might be quite a big thing for me, that, that, might, that moment that I had that I was like, you know, you've just got to let go and just go with it, whatever happens. And I think that, might have translated through into life. I think I was expecting it just to be all like roses for me, like I'm just gonna go and have a really nice time. It's not gonna, but but yeah, it was it was so unusual that I found a dark side that I didn't know was there. And um, but but yeah, that, but that's not a negative thing. That's a really positive thing because I feel great now having seen that side to me that's obviously there and that 
sometimes probably wants to come out, but I never ever let it out. I definitely don't regret it. I think it was like one of the best things I've ever done. I'm still trying to understand exactly what it was, <laughs> but I've definitely noticed some changes. And I, and I know, and I know from, like I say, from meditation that to not necessarily expect everything now that I'll probably notice stuff in like six to 12 months. Cause it's like, it changes some habit pattern in your head, I think, and until, you're, until you're in a situation that you know how you would normally behave in that situation, you don't know what's changed in you. I think doing it this way was just, and I've never had a bad side to it, doing it recreationally. And not that there was a, a bad side as such, it was, there was a scary side, but the scary side, you actually learn a lot more from than you do the enjoyable side. So I think the difference is it was, it, was, it doesn't even compare actually, you can't, it's just totally different. I would definitely, I think I would struggle to do it recreationally now. And it feels like, an insult to the drug, doesn't it? <laughs> I would say that everyone who comes here has a good experience, but not necessarily an easy one. There is this notion of psychedelics being teachers, and I really feel that it is a bit like that, that you, it's a strong lesson and then you have to do your homework. Sometimes it can be totally not obvious at all and can even be a bit confusing how, like, what, what did it really bring for me? Like, not, not this super intellectual clarity about it. But then participants will notice that they're just reacting to things differently. There's a huge hype now coming that everyone's kind of like, ah, oh, psychedelics are going to be the answer. And I think it's incredibly great that the, the tide is turning, that the narrative is changing, that people are being able to see their, its potential again, but it's also not a quick fix by any means. It's very powerful, but it's not a quick fix. As much as I'm a total advocate of psychedelics, it also doesn't work like that. 